All right, good afternoon, gents, and two ladies that are watching, maybe one, probably none. But uh, we're going to start to do this a little bit more often rather than just doing the regular podcast. I'm thinking maybe every other week or every third week where we kind of dig into something that uh, I'm working on or something I'm interested in uh, at the time or at the moment uh, rather than just, you know, answering, you know, detailing questions. I'm going to start doing more of this with detailing as well because I know that's, you know, the, probably the most common thing we have uh, together is, is you know, discussing detailing and paint correcting. I'm going to work on the E36 here soon. It's, it's almost done. Uh, but today I wanted to dig into what I'm, what's on top of mind for me, which is uh, Milwaukee uh, accessory collection. Uh, I got the lev rack installed and uh, I really want to get, especially with Mike being here, you know, we're using this stuff you know, all day, every day. And uh, we have all, his, all these accessory pieces for all of our Milwaukee stuff and we can't find any of it. So um, it's largely because I, I have some at home and some here and I took a bunch to Helen. Uh, and so what I'm doing is kind of reorganizing. I'm gonna reorganize the cabinet array. You can see some tool grid in the back. I'm kind of messing around there. Uh, and so I'm gonna redistribute all my tools here between lev rack and the you know, sonic array to get everything set up. So I'm going to take you through each kit. Uh, this is uh, what I call the Accessory Master Collection. I, I hate this thing. Um, this is what you get at Home Depot. This. And then some dork at you know, Milwaukee and Home Depot are the ones that are deciding what sizes I get. I don't want that. I want all of them. I want all this. Give me this, but like in a giant briefcase with all of them and they don't make it, like it doesn't exist. Uh, and so uh, first step for me was to make the kits. Second step is going to be uh, make it so that you can buy and uh, replenish or refresh your kits as you, you know, break a bit or something like that. And then the third step would be to make a solution, some sort of storage solution. I may work with uh, Jacob All or something like, someone like that to help me, you know, design this, put it all together. So uh, that's the plan here is to, um, is to get this stuff set up. Now, I'm gonna unbox this all, kind of lay it out, show you what everything is. This is ridiculously expensive uh, to do a one of everything kit, or at least one of everything that I think is, uh, needs to be in my drawer. There's some stuff that I probably won't use as often, but I'd, I'd like to have, and that's, that's where this comes from. So the first thing we're gonna start with is the uh, impact bit kit, because I think this is the, 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 mo this is the most used kit in my garage. Uh, but the, uh, if you, uh, Mike, if you can show him where the master collection is, what is it, $62.50? Not $62, 6200 So if you go to master collection, and then if you go to, you know, you, you, when you click on the product, you have the option to choose the master collection toolkit, the master collection plus accessories, which is like twenty two grand or something insane. And then there's the master collection, you know, accessories only. You see it there? Did you find it? If you can't find it, then we're in real trouble here. So, so um, the accessory package, you could just buy this whole thing, you know, which we've sold, you know, a half a dozen of these, something like that. So this isn't something that people are going to buy every day. Uh, this is like aspirational stuff here. This is my dream that I'm uh, presenting as a reality. And where I learned about this setup is uh, if you go to Park Tools, you know, Park Tools makes, makes bike tool kits. They have like the master mechanics collection. And I've always used that to be my shopping list. I still have never pulled the trigger on getting my whole bike kit, but, um, but that's where this comes from. And so then what, what I'm going to be working through is each part and each kit individually. So from the master collection, then we have what are called packages. And then from actually it's master collection, solutions, packages, kits. So we're going to be working on one kit at a time. This is how it would come to you with a little better tape on it, but in a box with all the accessories in it. Uh, and so I'm gonna open one at a time. So this is the impact bit kit. It's 915 bucks. And uh, I know that's an insane amount of money, but look at what you get with this thing. This, this, this is my favorite, favorite kit. So we'll start with step bits. So there are two type, types of step bits for Milwaukee. There's impact step bits, which are the ones that have the, you know, the regular uh, hex connection here, or the connection that goes in your impact. And then there's the drill type uh, impact, uh, um, uh, step bits. So I, this kit comes with 
the number two, number four, number nine, and number three. So it's two, three, four, nine. I think that's it. And I have my spreadsheet. Oh, nope, number one, number one there. They skip a couple, couple of uh, sizes. So let's just make sure I have everything in here. I should have it. Um, see, I made a spreadsheet of all this, all this stuff. Um, where's our step bits? So the impact step bits are down there. That one, two, three, four, and nine. So that's that's all all the step bits. And so basically, I want one of every size they make, and this is every size they make, and so that's what we have in the package. Then another thing, this is more of a luxury. I haven't really used this very much, uh, but they make an impact hole saw, which would just be a, like a quick change. Like if you're doing something simple, uh, it does all you know metal, stainless, and you know and PVC. These really aren't designed for wood. Uh, they won't do very well with uh, with wood boring. But um, but they you know again the difference is is the what do we call this? The chuck, the hand, the uh, anvil. I forget what you call the collector on a on a on an impact. You know, it's the quarter inch thingy. Call it? Is that what do we call this thing? Somebody help me in the comments here. This thing, where you put the quarter inch sized stop sign in the hole. <laughs> this is gonna make all the real men real happy. You don't even know what you're talking about. Why are you the one to even do this? I said, well, because I have the money to do it. I don't know, because I like it, whatever. Um, what I am really good at is um, this catalog is like, I don't know, it's like 80 pages or something insane. And so what I'm good at is figuring out how to put together a system. So you have all the various sizes of these. So there's three quarter inch, um, inch and a half, inch and three eighths, to get these in order, inch and an eighth, one inch size. So we have all these different sizes that we, seven eighths as well, which fits uh, fits in the middle here. And so that's our, our little um, impact hole saw kit. So the, the best part about this whole thing is cutting all these open and getting it set up. And then, uh, oh, one more here. There's, uh, what is this, inch and a quarter. So that squeezes in here. And so, yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of these thingies. Then we've got some impact drill and tap set, which is a good thing to have. Uh, they don't um, they don't make a lot of sizes in these, but these only come in a set, and so this is the only way to buy it. And so what I'm generally doing with these is, if it comes in a set, I'll buy the set. But most of the stuff I'm buying in bulk. Uh, and so if you were to buy this all individually at Home Depot, it would probably cost twice as much um, because you'd have to buy like each one of these things individually. Like see some of these like a PZ, uh, a, pa um, a Posi Drive number three, they don't sell like a 200 piece kit. They don't sell it in bulk. They only sell it in singles. But you can see in this, so these are all the, the PZ, the Posi Drive stuff. Um, so there's P1, P2, um, and P3, and there's the insert depth, and there's two inch depth. Uh, and so I want all of them. I want one of each of them. And so we have all of those in here, and we put it in a little baggie. Uh, so there's your one, two, three on the insert bit, and then there's the one, two, three on the two inch size. These they sell in like a 250 bulk pack. Uh, and so I open up that pack and then pull one out and it costs like you know half as much to do it that way. So those are PZs, which are very rarely gonna use. These also are rarely gonna use, but we have uh, impact, these are security bit. Uh, and then we have all these weird ones like uh, woodworking type bits. Um, you have the um, e ECX type bits as well. So these are the ones that like I'll put like in a little cubby in my, in my tool grid where who knows there's also flat you know flat blade you know your, your normal screwdriver bit uh, which you're rarely going to use it doesn't work very well on an impact but these are all things that uh, and then these are like hex security you know in case in case you needed it you'd have it uh, and so those are the things a lot of times they won't have in any of the milwaukee kits which most of us have gotten this far in life without having them but you know, you never know if you're working on some weird, you know, foreign car or something like that, you may have a need for something like that as you're working on it. Then we have the Torx stuff. So all our Torx, so Torx comes in uh, one inch, two inch, three and a half inch, and six inch. Uh, and so uh, I want them all. Uh, and then they also make a Torx security bit, insert bit set. So these are what we call insert size. Uh, and then they do, 
the one inch size. So this is your, your normal, actually this is two inch size, sorry. So yeah, they do make insert. So this is insert size. This is two inch size. And then I think the most useful size is a three and a half inch and then they make six inch. And so this would be T10 up through T50, uh, which would be you know all the sizes we have in here. And then like these, they sell in bulk 25 packs. These they sell in bulk 250 packs. So I'm buying whatever the the least expensive option is, biggest package or biggest pack, and then we're putting it in a not so professional baggie that comes to you. Uh, and then um, what my suggestion is going to be, and I'll, we'll do a follow up video when I start to tool grid all of this. Thinking about doing like an eight hour live stream where we tool grid this all, all this stuff out. And I'm gonna have it all outfitted in, uh, in this set up here, uh, doing a combination of tool grid, combination of um, of separators. So here's all my tool grid I have thrown in here that I've taken apart from my house. Uh, so we have these like these little separators that I'm going to separate in the Rousseau drawers. Uh, and then this is a cubby holder. Um, so you'll be able to, we'll be able to put various cubbies for some of these. And so I'm going to have it all labeled and organized and set up and structured in here. And so the first step is to get it out of the box. And the second step is to do, um, you know, to get, to get the rest of the setup. Then we have, um, pH one, pH two, pH three, and all the various sizes. And then like some of these like pH two, you're going to use most commonly. So I'll have three pH two bits. And so I just made a decision. Somebody has to decide how many, how many pH ones versus pH twos, um, um, pH threes, would you have? Uh, and so we have this set up, and you can get all the particulars on the on the site in the kit section. It shows you exactly which ones come with it. Then, um, then we have all of our um, our locking and extension and insert depth holders. And so these come in one inch, two inch, three and a half inch, six inch, I think twelve inch and eighteen inch. So there's various sizes of those. Here's our square drive stuff, which we're using today on our, um, our cabinet install on the, uh, the NatureCast stuff that I'm doing right now. So those are good for cabinets and woodworking stuff. And then these, super useful. So you have all of your, um, your anvils for sockets and then also all of your um, nut drivers. So various size nut drivers. They, they have both metric, we have both metric and, which is gonna be rare, and uh, SAE is all in here, SAE you'll use more. And they make these in, in a couple of different sizes. They make it in insert depth, one inch and two inch. You can see the, the two inch size. And so there's just no way, like even just this, this kit alone, like you couldn't buy this anywhere. Um, and so I want to buy it. I want it. I want one of everything or two, or in some cases, two or three of everything. Uh, and then I want like have the, this right angle attachment is good to have for when you have all these bits in case you need to get in somewhere. So they make a, a fancy heavy duty one and they make a not so fancy regular one. I couldn't decide. So I put both of them in the kit. It's like 35 bucks or something like that. Here's your um, nut remover kit. So this is for if you have something rounded off. You can see it'll grab and uh, and tear tear the uh, tear the nut off if if it gets stuck. And then last pieces here we have what? Oh. Then we have um, why is this so the SQ1 fits in there? The square. And then we have the universal quick locks. I don't use these as much as I use these, the regular impact holder, uh, but these are good to have. You need it to lock on if you're doing something, something more specific. So they make a, uh, a three inch, six inch, 12 inch, and then here's our 18 inch pieces here. So these are the longer ones that my mom wrapped up for me. She'll wrap it up for you as well. And so here's our longer stuff. So we've got six. Uh, this is the 12. Uh, another six. So we'd, I'd have a couple of sixes because these, you know, you might lose one or something disappears. And then you have the 12 and 18 inch in the, uh, in the regular. And these will hold the one inch in insert depth, quarter inch hex. Quarter inch hex, that's what we call it. It's the hex cullet. So that's our 
not so well organized here, not so well laid out, I should say. Um, full Milwaukee uh, bit and accessory package for your impacts. So this would be for, and the one I grabbed earlier, this would be for, you know, your surge or your, like this is the most common, you know, this is the, which are actually, aren't, uh, Tommy, aren't the new ones coming out here in a couple of weeks? Yeah. All these are being replaced with, they're having, they have a new battery, the, a couple of new batteries and they have a brand new version of these coming out, not the surge, but the regular the surges aren't being replaced. The surges, I'm telling you, you know, like we're, I use the surge probably 75% of the time. The surge tools I have at my house, so um, the, um, actually this is the surge here. I just have the, uh, so this is the M18 version of the surge. I think this is the surge. Yep. So the surge is just smoother, a little less torque, but smoother. And so all of these devices, all of these things go into the quarter inch hex receiver here. So that's what these are all for. So you have a $915 kit that services, you know, basically four tools. Uh, and so this is the way for you to get a socket on it. And I had originally thought that we would, um, we would sell, you know, socket packages and things like that. But I, I think, um, I think, you know, most people are already going to have a socket. So I didn't include that in this, in this package, in this, in the, the way that I, I've set this thing up. All right. So let's do our next package. Let's see what I have next. On so this. Matt, in, in between those, let's take a few questions here. Okay. Uh, so we've got uh, Improved Garage, a super chat. Uh, UPS was just here. NAD C388 and SVS SB3000. Nice. Thanks, Ed W., for all your help. Yeah, C388 is awesome. Yeah, That's glad cool. glad you like it. Um, we've also got uh, Richard Powell. He wants to know, have you got any wash and talk sessions planned? Um, yeah, I was thinking about doing one this weekend, but we'll see. The M3 needs cleaned, the uh, E92, so I'll probably dial that in here shortly. So we've got a third and final question here. So Steve Owens, and there's probably a few other people that are wondering as well, where is the podcast? This is it. So ask questions away while I play with this stuff. So this will go up on, you know, on Spotify and all that stuff as well. So, um, but yeah, we're going to do this kind of um, product answering. We'll do it with detailing. We'll do it with pressure washing. We'll do it with uh, tools. We'll do it with all kinds of cool stuff. Um, so I'm going to be doing this more often, um, not to replace the podcast, just to add to it and just to kind of keep it, keep it fresh. All right. Next one is the drill bit kit. Uh, so this one's a thousand twenty-five bucks. So I've got them all back here in my, my spot here. I've had these in this, I've had these in one of the Sonic cabinets for months. It's the concrete bit kit, grinder accessory kit. This is the specialty wood kit. Uh, let's see, bandsaw, sawzall. This is eight and a quarter inch. Maybe it's this one up here. What is this one? 12 inch. Uh oh, I need my. I think I need the, uh, yeah, those are the large ones. I don't have that here. All right, we'll have to skip over that one and come back to that. So I need a, um, I need a drill bit kit. Next drill kit? Yeah, yeah. So let's skip over that. Let's do the concrete bit kit. I've got to revamp, revamp this one a bit because I have it at my house, but I'm telling you, the SDS drill is remarkable. Uh, I, I didn't think I would need it because, you know, the, the, the regular drill does, does, you know, hammer functionality, has hammer function. Um, but the speed at which a SDS drill works in comparison to a, to a hammer drill is pretty remarkable. And so I've got to get, I've got to add to this package or maybe make a, a separate secondary kit, uh, which includes the, um, It'll do or add in the SDS style. I'll show you in a second what the difference is here. I think I might have an SDS bit over here for those of you who are not familiar. Uh, no, I got them all in my house. I don't have any here. Maybe I got one in here. 
No, not there, not there. Maybe I put it over here. I've got to really get this thing organized. Here we go. I knew I had one here somewhere. So this is what's called an SDS Plus style connection. There's also SDS Max, which is a little different. And then these are all your normal quarter inch hex style. Uh, so these would go on a regular, you know, call it like a regular um, a drill or, you know, hammer drill. Uh, and then this is specifically designed for a for SDS. And so I want to I want to add in because Milwaukee at the time when I was going through the accessory package they didn't have SDS. Uh, and so I need to uh, I need to add those to the to the package and uh, create a, a secondary package for the uh, for all this stuff. Cuz I'm telling you if you get if you get your hands on one, I have mine at the house we're using it. It uh, it's so much more efficient than doing especially if you do a lot of tap cons and stuff like that. And so this kit comes with very size, um, so these are all your, you know, three eighths, quarter inch, five sixteenths, five thirty seconds, nine sixteenths, uh, all your different sizes, seven sixteenths, half inch, uh, and then these are your uh, six inch size. So you need a bunch of those, and many of these I'll have two, three, four, five of in our package. And the reason why, again, I'm putting this in a in a bag baggie like this is because. Um, I'm buying these in like a like a 250 or 300 or 500 bulk package. I'm breaking them out uh, and then making them less, less less costly. Whereas some Milwaukee will only sell in one. So whichever is the least costly version, it brings the package cost down. So this is 300 bucks, 320 bucks for uh, various size uh, bits. Any questions, Brad? Yeah, we've got one from uh, Improved Garage. Can someone ask Matt what pocket knife that is and if he likes it? This is a Chris Reeve Sabenza. It's a 600 something dollar knife. It's, I love it, it's amazing. So off topic a little bit, but Will Sherry wants to know, we are doing a full home remodel with a completely new garage addition. At what yeah. point should we engage with you and do our garage design? Um, I mean, I think I'd probably want to do the design stuff as early as possible. Um, you know, I think, um, I think you certainly want to do it way before you're going to break ground as you're, when you're in the planning, when you're, when you're working with, I would say before you, if you're, if you're working with an architect, you'd probably want to do that before you know, get that done beforehand. So we have, yeah, we have some people that get with garage design before they even start building, right? And then, you know, what they want with the garage helps decide what they do on the property, right? So you can really get involved anytime you want. Yeah. Um, we have another super chat from Christopher Backer. What are the specs on the G80 M3 you ordered? Uh, I ordered the, what do they call it? What's that called, Mike? Jahari? It's ha ha. How do they pronounce it? It's the Jahari, J-A-H-R-E. You know, it, which is the 50th anniversary edition uh, of the M3, uh, and so I've ordered that. It's an M3 special edition. It's uh, Vu. What is it? Uh, not Voodoo. Techno Violet. So that color. Techno Violet, carbon ceramics, carbon buckets, uh, and then it's basically fully loaded because it's the special edition. So I think it's like a 110 sticker or something like that. So. It has laser, the laser lights, has a, the special edition has a little bit different seats, a little different stitching, a little bit different, um, has like a little plaque in there and stuff like that. I didn't really care much about that. I just wanted the purple. Uh, and so uh, they, that, that should be here, who knows? I mean, it, it, they keep pushing it back, but theoretically November is when, when we'll see that car. And that will be, if not for here, that'll be for Helen. I'll do the full, um, the full Vorsteiner kit on the front of it, so it won't look so so douchey. So this is the this is 320 bucks, believe it or not. Um, so this includes uh, 18 inch, 12 inch, 6 inch from 1 inch down, you know, in all the various lengths. Uh, so yeah, 1 inch down on 6 inch, down to quarter inch uh, on the 12 inch. There's only three different sizes they make, uh, and then on the 6 inch size, you've got. All these 
various sizes as well. So this is the concrete. I cannot tell you how helpful this is to have. Uh, we use this all the time. Uh, I actually have it at my house right now. Um, and then I have, even at Helen, you know, even though we're not doing as much uh, work there as we've, we might do here, having this in your arsenal is, I think, super useful. So, you know, if I were, if I were buying two kits, these would be the first two. So, by the way, I'm doing this for me, not for you. I'm just reminding myself what this kit is so that I can start to get my mind wrapped around how this is going to get organized. So let's do, um, let's do one that won't be as common for many of you, the specialty woodworking bit kit. So this is an expensive one that you could forego if you're going to forego one of them. Oh, drill bits are right here. No, no, that's hole saw. Hopefully we have a drill bit kit. So this one is specialty woodworking. So there are some of these that you'll use a lot and some maybe not so much. And so specialty woodworking is expensive because of all these self feed bits, which you'd be surprised. This is 960 bucks for this, for this kit. So, and the reason for it is I put in all the big, all the giant sizes. So four and five eighths down uh, in the self-feed bit types. Uh, and then we also have the, the regular flat boring bit. And I use these all the time. And so again, whatever size Milwaukee makes, they make six inch. So these are all the six inch sizes from I think inch and a half down and then maybe an inch and three eighths down. So from inch and three eighths down all the way down to quarter inch. And then we have our self-feed bits, which run from, I think, one inch up. So that's all of these. All of these, and they go all the way up to the big boy, which is uh, four and five eighths, which is probably not necessary, but you never know. I use these often, like if I'm running wires or fishing wires, you want to drill through a header. You know, it makes a nice, clean wood. So these are for wood, wood only. That's why we call it specialty woodworking. And so these actually fit pretty nicely in tool grid as well. Uh, and then we have some longer of the flat boring bits. So they go from one inch down, I believe. Yeah, one inch down. And then the last thing in the specialty woodworking bit is the, um, is the brad points. These are great for doing handles and things like that where you need a really straight, really round the hole for doing something like I, I use these when I'm doing uh, hardware, you know, hardware on, on a wooden or PVC cabinet. So that's our specialty kit. Again, this would be probably the last one I would buy if I were you because of the expense of this and the fact that you're going to use this stuff probably less than anything else because anything you could do with this, you could probably do other than getting a really large hole, um, a nice round large hole, um, you could do with a regular drill bit kit. But Milwaukee makes it and so I want it. So a few questions and comments, Matt. Uh, first one is from our own Chris Toto. He says it's pronounced Yare. Yare. Yeah, oh, that's right. Yare. Yeah. Yare. That's stupid. German for 50th or something. I don't know that. What, uh, yeah, all, all, all he wrote is the RA. Um, we have a question from Skull. He wants to know, when is the new Peloton going to be installed? Freaking Peloton. You have a Peloton, don't you, Brad? I do. You know, I did at one point in time. Was there I a did. beach towel hanging from it more often than it was used? It, it's the kind of thing that you do buy, and then you use it real hard for about a month, and yeah. then it sits still for yeah, it's another the, two it's years. It's the regular man's working out. You know, I don't have a lot of room to talk because I'm a chubby, <laughs> but if I am going to work out, I know how to do it, and a Peloton isn't doing it, so find a better, better thing. Question from Ken Jeeper. Did you see the rag company's new diamond coating lineup? It looks almost yeah, too good I, to I be true. Yeah, I talked to Levi about it, and we might try it at some point. I don't really have a problem with the coating that I'm using now, so I don't know. We'll see. Um, this is the whole saw bit kit. Other questions? So this one is super useful, 725 bucks. It's seven times more. What's like a normal like a whole saw bit kit? You get like four of them. They're like you know 80 bucks or something like that. This is 700 bucks, 
but it has every single size, um, every single size possible. So this goes from what you get, which by the way, if you click on the site, three quarters, seven eighths, one, one and an eighth, one and a quarter, one and three eighths, one and a half, one and three quarter, one and seven eighths, two inch, two and an eighth, two and a quarter, two and three eighths, two and a half, two and five eighths, two and three quarters, three, three and a half, three and five eighths, four, four and a half, or four and a quarter, four and a half, five and six. Uh, and then I also included, which is also useful, is for different types or different sizes, you need different arbors. Uh, and so um, they have um, like, like these uh, pull to release style or quick change style, but the quick change won't fit on a little baby one. So a quick change won't fit on this, say like a, like a like a inch or below, uh, and so that's where you need the you know, the seven sixteenths or quarter inch size, uh, and so I have all of the various types of arbor shank sizes. So they make two three eighths versions, and it tells you on it which sizes it works for. So the, so this three eighths inch three eighths inch style works from six from one and a quarter to six and seven eighths. As far as the, I don't think they make a six, seven, six, and seven eighths, but if they do, I need to get it. Um, and then, so it tells you like these are for the small ones, these are for any size um, uh, above one and a quarter. So, so you need the arbors in order to use these. And these are um, multi material, so these are the carbide style, and so these will work on metal as well. Not quite as well um, on metal as they, they make. Um, I think they call it. I forget what they call the other ones, but they have a they have a, a masonry style, and they also have a, a metal only style, um, which I decided to just do these, um, just I say to keep the cost down. Um, but and, you know, again, somebody has to make decisions. So this is the whole saw kit, which I think you'll find super useful. Is that the uh, regular one? Okay. Okay. Well, I have half of the stuff over here, so let me have this one. This is the one that Jeff brought. It's a 90% one. To, yeah. So we'll have to. I'll have to go through this and see what we're missing. So this is. Um, this is the one you want. So this is the um, thousand bucks, thousand twenty-five. So this is one of every drill bit. Uh, so this one includes. Uh, these are the non, uh, non, these are, these are step bits without the hex, without the, the quarter inch hex drive. Uh, so these are the ones designed just for the drill. So it includes all of the, all the step bits. Yeah, this is, this is not, this is no good. This includes a bunch of junk. This was the, the kit that I had, um, Belong in here. So what you're getting with this, just to summarize, I had taken this to Helen because I was missing some that I had broken and things like that from my uh, from my last because um, I had taken my my master collection from my house to Helen. And so this one will include, let's just kind of show you the picture of it, which is a little better representation. So these puppies are awesome. So there's three of these. There's a 3 16ths, 11 16th, 64ths, and I forget what this third size is. The third size is um, uh, 3 16ths, oh uh, no, uh, 9 64ths. So there's a 9 64ths, 11 64ths. But these are your, um, your countersink style. Um, so it's a, you know, it's a d diminishing tip, uh, and then this section here is serrated for, for countersinking. I love these things. We use, I use these more than any other bit. Uh, so these, these includes all three sizes of those. That includes all of the, and this is the problem I have with trying to buy the, um, the drill bits. These are all of the um, um, uh, metric. So two and a half millimeter up to 13 millimeter, and then uh, from 1 16th all the way to half inch. Uh, and then your step bit. So one, one through 12 are the step bit style that it, that it comes with. 
Does that seem right? Yeah, that's not right. Uh, yeah, I guess it is. Yeah, it is right. Because they do, I'm just missing some because I pulled some out for, for Helen. So one, so there's eight, nine, 11, so four, five, six, seven. That's right. I needed to pull a couple of these out of this kit for, for my, my Helen garage. So we need to complete this uh, and put this back together. So imagine this, that the problem I have with this setup right now is that, you know, these, you know, as goofy as these things are, you know, you really need some sort of fold out thing. Otherwise your drill bits end up just kind of thrown together. Uh, and so like, like I have mine, you know, just sitting here, I have some that are open that are just kind of like this, which is no good. So I need to figure out what to do with that. So you can see, I kind of have a hodgepodge of, um, this is what, what, what I want to organize. I've, I opened up a kit and I've used some of them and some of them I didn't. And then I have a half open kit. So I need to get all this stuff put together and organized so that I have a full master collection. I've like, I'm going to have a full accessory master collection here and then a partial master collection at my house. We have a full master collection in Helen. Uh, this is my, uh, retirement plan that if I keep stockpiling all this, uh, all this stuff, uh, and then maybe I can sell it all off when I uh, when I'm 75 and want to retire. So that's the um, the drill bit kit minus a few items, but includes one of every drill bit that they make, uh, and they only sell drill bits individually. They don't sell those in bulk packages. So, so. some questions here, Matt. Uh, similar to that Epiphany detailing, any plans to sell individual bits from the packages? Yeah, so I, I think what we're gonna do next is we're gonna set it up so that we can do like replenishments. And so what ultimately what I'd love to have on the site is you have the, so you have the kit and you can go to the kit and you'll be able to do a la carte from that and just click, uh, you know, click the checkbox of the ones you wanna add to your cart. So let's say you broke, you know, let's say you've had this, this collection for five years and you go and you take inventory and you've broken you know, seven or eight bits, you can just go click through the sizes and click the seven that you want uh, and then add it to your cart and purchase it that way. That's our next evolution on these. The first step was to get it set up. Next step would be, then we have to go create all these items a la carte. Uh, so in order to make this work, we had to build the package. We built the package uh, and then we'll, we'll start to take photos of each individual item and write an individual item description and, and take, it, take it to the next level and, and set it up that way. But rather than having you know, thousands and thousands of items on our store, on our site, I would rather just have a collection and then have set it up to where we can just check the box and you can go replenish. We're gonna do the same thing with detailing as well. That's, that's our goal, to create you know, replenish kits, things like that. So another question from Philippe, how are you going to label everything? Yeah, so that's the trick. Um, I'm not sure yet. We're gonna have to have something made. Um, and so what I've been doing is laying it out in tool grid and just putting them in order, uh, which is kind of clunky. Um, it really doesn't need to be labeled like the, the, the impact get kit, the, um, uh, the thing that needs to be labeled most are your drill bits because that's annoying trying to keep those organized. Uh, the other thing I'd like to try to figure out is saws. And so uh, there's lots of guys online, um, Jacob Wallace, my, my buddy. Um, so he, he's doing a lot of uh, organization stuff with 3D printing. Um, and so this has taken a lot longer than I'd hoped, but I would like to get this stuff organized on my site. And then the next step would be to start to build out to either through tool get grid or have Jake build something. And then we go have an injection mold made in bulk. Um, where we could have it where it's labeled and organized and structured. So the other nice thing would be if you can pull it out, uh, pull it out of your, your, your drawer and then put it in a pack out and take it with you in, in different sections. Uh, and so my long-term goal would be to continue to make this um, modular, but also um, you know, pack outable, if you will. So that's the, the long-term goal. It's not as easy as it, as it seems. So that's what I'm hoping to work toward. So we did hole saws, we did concrete bits, we did specialty wood. Um, I've got the, the drill bit kit that I clearly have to go and organize. Um, uh, Milwaukee impact bit, um, we just did that. Let's do the multi-tool. Multi-tool is, I love this thing. We use this thing more than anything. 
So this is the multi-tool. I transitioned to doing the M18 version, the M18 fuel, uh, rather than using the other. And um, I put together a package of one of every size. So here's the kit here. So we've pre-packaged these, <clears throat> so when you order, it's ready to go. <coughs> Excuse me. So there's a few of these that they sell in bulk, so that's these sizes. And then the way I've sectioned it out is, like, they'll make a titanium version and a non-titanium version, and so we, uh, if, if there's... If there's a non-titanium version in the same size as titanium, it's kind of like there's a non-fuel version as I would choose the fuel tool. Same thing on this. I'm going to choose the titanium version of the multi-material um, cutter or, saw or blade. Uh, and so this thing has all kinds of different functionality that maybe you weren't aware. But you can do sanding. Um, so there's a there's like a quick release uh, sander, uh, and they also have all the pads for this. which are here, uh, and so they make, um, uh, these are three and a half inch triangle sandpaper sized in 240 grit, 120 grit, 80 grit, and 60 grit. So we have a six pack of each in there, so that, that goes with that. Uh, and then you have your, um, this is your like paint and tile uh, remover. Uh, adhesive remover so you can change the oscillation speed and use the use the the blade to you know try to take linoleum off or glue or something like that um, then they have all the cutting stuff which is super useful cutting baseboards are the most common thing I cut with uh, is what I'll what I'll normally trim and then you have this, which is super useful, which is the um, a diamond. This is a um, uh, grit, a grout remover. So you can you can multi-tool out the the sort of the joints in your grout for removing back backsplash and stuff like that. This thing's awesome. Uh, and then you just have a larger um, uh, carbide grit sander. Uh, so this is also for um, helping to try to remove thin set and stuff like that. So these these kind of go together. So you have sanding, adhesive removal, cutting, and then grout removal. And that's, as of right now, those are all the types of, of, uh, of accessories that they make for the multi-tool. And this is, um, how much is this thing? 245 bucks. See, to me, I just wish I could just go to Home Depot and buy this. I guess it's good for me that you can't. But I just want this box. Just send me this, I want to be able to buy this box and have everything I need. So I want to buy this tool, buy this box. So the tool is 300 bucks and the kit's 300 bucks and I've got everything that I need to do all of the stuff that I would need to use with my, with my multi-tool. Okay. What else do I got to unbox? Uh, Sawzall blades. This one is a bit ridiculous. I probably need to change this one a bit. It's uh, I just, I just couldn't say no. I just wanted, wanted, I wanted five of everything. So this is a thousand sixty bucks. This is where we need to set it up so that you can buy a la carte because most of you aren't gonna pony up a thousand bucks for this. But you know, what's a sawzall? Sawzall's like five hundred something dollars. You know, and. What good is a sawzall without blades? And I'm always, I always found myself not having the blade I need. And then I go to Home Depot and I buy like one of them. So almost all of these are sold in bulk. And so I'm able to save us a lot, oh boy, save us a lot of money uh, by not having to buy individually like this. So, well, let's go through it. My mom wraps all these things up. So, shoot, I gotta open it anyway. You get the idea here, you know, they have different grout removal tools and um, let me just kind of explain, rather than pulling this all out and it's taking it all day, let's just kind of go through this here. 
So if you can see the photo here, so here's the entire collection. And I want five of each blade, so five of each type. And some of them are sold in singles, some of them are sold in bulk packs, some of them are sold in twos, and so I'm, I'm kind of working out buying the biggest package I, I can get my hands on and then breaking it up if I need to. So you're getting um, the, the axe, which is a carbide teeth. That's for you know cutting through um, um, uh, trusses and joists and things like that, two by fours. Then there's the wrecker, which is a little bit more, um, the a little less, um, has more teeth. And then you have the, um, the torch, which has, um, which has even, even more teeth. And then you have the ice hardened torches and you have the um, pruning saw blades and clean wood blades and, and then metal specific blades. And then you have the diamond blades, which is for cutting, uh, cutting um, uh, the heavy metal like carbon steel, things like that. You have you know, some rough cut, cut blades, some rough in sawzall blades. You have the scraper stuff, the grout removal tool. You have uh, specific blades for drywall, for duct work for pretty much anything you can think of. And you're getting five of each of those. So it's, it's like four or 500 blades in a box. And then, man, what I really wanna do, like I'd love to have it so that I could uh, tool grid this out and have it all have specific slots and have it labeled. Uh, like even these sometimes are good to have. You can grab your Sawzall and go cut a tree down if you want to, <laughs> it's good. So um, you, know, you have things like, uh, these, these are drywall specific cutting drywall. Oh no, these are the duct, duct work. So if you're uh, cutting anything to do with air conditioning or ducts, it's good to have just in case. I just like having it just in case I wanted to do it. And then these are all our torch and ice hardened and stuff like that that we sell and uh, that we buy the 250 packs. So that's the Sawzall kit. So Matt, back to the uh, multi-tool. We have a question. Is the Milwaukee yep. multi-tool better than the Makita XLT? I mean, I don't know. I, I, probably not much. Um, I mean, I haven't used the, I use the original Makita, and I think the XLT is newer. Um, I mean, I think in general, tool for tool, I, I talked to the Makita people. I just wasn't a, a huge Makita fan. The, I found the only reason I was asking Makita is because Milwaukee was telling me no. So I'm inclined to say, you know, in tool for tool, if you were to go through the entire line, I'm sure Makita makes some superior tools than Milwaukee. Same thing with DeWalt. You know, in a perfect world, you would have all types of batteries and, and have the best tool for each specific task, but it's just not very practical. And so I think if you were to go line versus line, my wager is that, you know, Milwaukee is better. That's why I chose them. Um, I think their batteries are better. I think that their, their tools are heavier duty. Um, their warranty is great. Um, you know, the people, all the people that I spoke to at Milwaukee seemed to be longer tenured uh, and more, had more expertise. I talked to Makita engineers. I talked to Milwaukee engineers. The Milwaukee engineers impressed me more. Uh, and so um, when, if, if Milwaukee had said no, I probably would be touting Makita right now. Um, but I think that, um, I think that, you know, I, I think Milwaukee is the best tool line, but what do I know? I'm a white collar guy just shopping for this stuff. You know, what else do we got? What's next here? So let's talk about right angle grinder stuff. I think I need to change this one too. I'll show you what I'm talking about here. So we're talking about... This was a really confusing pick for me because Milwaukee makes five or six different right angle grinders. Uh, and so the one that I've chosen is the uh, 2980-20. Uh, this is the four and a half to six inch version. It can take all, all, all size blades. It has rapid stop. I think there was one slightly larger one and there's like two or three not as good. Uh, and so this is the, this, the one that I chose after having you know, hands on them. I, I, we do use this quite a bit. Uh, and so having a bunch of blades was important to me uh, because you can see this blade on here is toast. Uh, and so having them, not only having a bunch of different types, but having, um, having quantity of all the different types was important. And that is this one here. 
but after having this for a while, there's, I probably want to change this. And this is surprising. This is only 285 bucks. I say only, but you'll see what you get. There's a lot of blades in here. So all the, all the thinner cutting style, grinding, cutting blades, not grinding so much, but more cutting, the cutting specific ones, we have 10. Uh, and then I have five of all the grinding type, but the grinding type I find that I don't use very often. Uh, and so I think I'm gonna change this, the structure of this. So this would be a, so this is a, a five inch. So we have four and a half, six, or five inch and six inch. But these thicker grinding style, I don't think you need five of them. Um, I find myself using these very rarely. Now, if you're, you know, if you're doing a lot of real work, real man work, which I'm not, I'm mainly using this to cut off bolts on lift installs. Uh, and so all of these grinding specific ones, uh, and they have offset ones and they have flush style. Uh, I don't think are as necessary as the cutting ones. So here would be an example of a thinner, you know, cutting blade and six inch. And so actually the sixes, I think we do five of. So what we do, what I came up with, yeah, so you have type one cutoff wheel. So the type ones, we have four and a half, five and six. These are type 27, which is an offset style. And so then I have type 27, four, four and a half, five and six. Uh, and then we're doing, uh, there's, then there's the light grinding and then there's the metal and stainless grinding and then there's the concrete grinding. Uh, and so the problem is I'm doing a, you know, having a quantity that um, I, like we probably need more of these cut off and less maybe go down to, you know, maybe just maybe two of these or one of some of the bigger ones. Uh, so I think I may adjust this a little bit. Um, also, we need to make a note that in the description, it doesn't tell you what you're actually getting. It just says you're getting one of each, which you're not. So it doesn't have the quantity of what you're getting in here on our, on our description. Uh, but I'm telling you, having these, I mean, you'll blow through these all the time. It's a really good thing to have, especially if you have the, the right angle grinder. So I'll just put these back in. So I've, I'm gonna, I'm probably gonna revamp this a little bit. But having, um, having a drawer full of these, and I haven't quite figured out how to organize these. I need to figure out a nice, convenient way. And I'm thinking some sort of like, almost like a, you almost need something like an old, you know, an old CD holder kind of thing. I need something like that that folds out uh, and you can kind of sort through your discs and know which ones need to be replenished. This would be a really important kit for us to have, you know, a replenishment capability because just some of those grinding discs you're going to have for the rest of your life and others you're going to be rolling through and needing to replace on a, you know, on a periodic basis. But I need them all the time to cut off stuff on doing aftermarket parts on cars and things like that. And it's something I use probably, maybe not weekly, but every other week on average. So then we've got uh, jigsaw blades, which is super useful. My jigsaw is over at the garage. Or I'm sorry, over at the house. We're using that to do the, uh, to do the cabinet install Mike's working on right now. But this, I don't know what half these blades do, what the difference is, but I just want on all of them. That way I have the choice to test them out. Doesn't look like much. This is 175 bucks, but it's one of every, every size they make. They make four inch, three inch, and I think five inch. Uh, four inch, maybe not. Three and four inch are the only type. But you have metal cutting, wood cutting, there you go, five and a quarter. So they have one type of five and a quarter, um, mostly four inch. So you have metal, 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 metal cutting, different types of metal, um, wood cutting, wood specific, wood specific, wood general purpose. Uh, and so you have, you have three sizes and three types. And that's basically one five pack of everything that Milwaukee makes, which, I think it's cool to have. And kind of rounding out the system here, we have, so if you order the master collection, all this stuff would show up at your door. What was this one? 
Oh, this is uh, larger blades. So this is only necessary if you have the um, chop saw. So they make a 60 tooth, a 44 tooth, Now, what is that saw? It's like 1200 bucks or something like that? 800 bucks? It's a lot of money. So to buy, uh, buy these blades, they are, it's 200 bucks for your miter saw. Chop saw, miter saw, whatever you want to call it. 80 tooth, and then the ultra fine 100 tooth, so if you're doing a lot of trim work. So you get the four different types of blades. I wouldn't use the blade that comes with the package uh, or comes with the system. I, I nixed that one. The one that comes with it, I think is a 60 tooth, but it's not as, it's not as nice as this one here, the carbide, carbide style. Uh, and so that's what this, this package is. So it's a couple hundred bucks and it's a good compliment to have if you're going to spend, you know, eight, 900 bucks on the, on the miter saw. That miter saw though is really nice. I had the DeWalt one, the plug-in DeWalt for a decade, and uh, maybe it's a couple decades. And so, to switch over to battery, took a lot for me to do, but I think it's great. And then you have the six and a half inch blades, depending on if you, um, so you got 24, uh, then they have metal specific, a 48 and a 54 tooth, which are uh, aluminum and metal cutting. So the 48 is for metal and the, the uh, 54 is for, um, for aluminum. This one is, again, for the six and a half inch circular saw is 120 bucks. And then you've got, if you have the D-handle saw, which is my favorite circular saw, you have the seven and a quarter inch size. Yeah, and you got, 24, 40, 60, and then a medium, a medium metal 56 tooth. That one is uh, 100 bucks. I'll just put these all together. And then the last thing we have is a bandsaw blade. If you bought a blank bandsaw, which I have, what are these? Let me see here. Oh yeah, you have eight and a quarter and the bandsaw. So the bandsaw has a pipe reamer and has a, uh, they have two types of uh, blades, like an extreme metal and then a regular blade. The regular blade comes with the bandsaw uh, and then I buy these in bulk and then, so this is the extreme uh, metal blade for cutting more stuff that's more, uh, more difficult to work with. And then you have a pipe reamer, which they make, which is nice to have and you're and just kind of bolted to the rest of your master collection and your organization system. And then eight and a quarter blades. We need to, Tommy, we need to change this. I just figured this out today. This eight and a half inch blade doesn't fit on the, I don't know what the heck this is for. Um, this, oh, this is for a miter saw. That's why, for their old miter saw. So eight and a quarter inch blades are for, um, for the table saw. So they only make a 24 and a 40 tooth for the table saw. Uh, I thought this 60 tooth was for the table saw, but I tried to put it on today and don't fit. So um, this would be for like their older, smaller, crappier uh, um, miter saw. So you can see we separate these out, super inefficient for shipping. And you got the three boxes over there. That's what a $6,250 set of one of everything looks like. It's a lot of money. It's a lot of stuff. But to me, it's a little different than the 32-piece set. Actually, the, no, the normal sets look like this. I think the biggest set they have is like 60 pieces. Oh, no, I have it at my house where they have like the different, like a couple of square drives and a couple of uh, different uh, PH2s in there. Um, but even, you know, drill bits, I mean, they, this is like the biggest one they make. It's like 20 piece set. I want the 
ultimate piece set. I want the Matt Mormon piece set, the one of everything. So how many pieces is this thing? This is the, uh, I added it up at one point. This is the 812 piece set. Yeah, 812. How much is that per piece though? <laughs> Let me see. So, 62.50 divided by 8.12. It's gone on my calculator, I just blew it up. My calculator just blew up. $7.70 per piece. But some of the stuff, like most of this, let's see, uh, let's see, uh, retail, you know, 80 cents, two dollars, 80 cents, four dollars and 90 cents, five dollars, 90 cents, dollar six. But then you get things like um, some of those, like the like the shockwave impact stuff. You know, like 20 bucks, 28 bucks. Some of the whole saws get expensive. Um, the uh, uh, let's see, the step bits are, you know, 18 bucks, 29 bucks, 32 bucks, 44 bucks. So the step bits get expensive. Um, some of those wood boring bits get expensive as well. Like a six inch hole saw is 42 bucks for that. So, oh no, 93 bucks, sorry, I was looking at the wrong line. So you end up with, but like, here's an example of like a PH1 two inch. I buy the 250 bulk pack. So a, a PH1 two inch, is like um, it's like uh, 300 bucks for for the for a 250 pack, and then I just take out two of them and put them in your package. So instead of you paying three bucks each, they're like a dollar or two bucks, you know. So instead of four bucks, they're they're two bucks or something like that. So it's just it costs a lot less to do it that way, and so I'm buying the bulk in order to make it so that the package, even though the package is still six grand. Um, the um, the cost would be more like probably seven or eight uh, because of all the different bulk stuff that I can buy. So like I'm buying, there's a 250 pack, a 25 pack, a bulk 10 pack, a bulk four pack, and then there's some one pack, one pack, one pack, one pack. They only sell it in a one pack. Here's one where they sell in a two pack and then I split it up and to get, you know, see if you only need one for the package. So I'm always buying the biggest pack possible in order to break the cost down. It seems so simple, you just have all the stuff in a box, but I cannot explain to you how many hundreds of hours that I put into figuring this out and then how many hundreds and hundreds of hours that the guys had to do just to set this thing up in the store and then how many hundreds of hours we have left to get to where I want this to get to. And who knows, maybe I'll never, nobody will ever buy it, but I'm gonna keep talking about it and sort of ram it down your throat, so. That's uh, that's the plan. So it's 426 different items, and the package includes 812. Because there, again, there's a bunch of them where I have you know more than one, five or ten or something like that. That's it. No big deal. So Just before we go, I got a few random questions. Um, I think worth answering. So quick question from Jay Collip. Is the Cox vacuum reel the same mounting footprint as the pressure washer hose reel? No, it's much wider. Yeah, it, I, think that, I think that one can fit across studs. It's right here. Hey, you can see it's um, about 18 inches wide. So much, much wider. I like the hose on this thing. It's just wait. I have a very, we have a very special edition. I have to test it. But uh, we're finally gonna knock vacuums out. I have a very, something really cool, not that Nat Air junk that Tromley tried to talk me into. This is gonna be legit. Super, super, super legit. It's gonna operate like somewhere between 54 and 60 decibels. And it's gonna be like 600 bucks. Not a lot of money, like retail. And then there's gonna be a larger, um, I think eight gallon version, it'll be like 775 or something. It's gonna be so sick. Uh, for the unit, for the, you know, for the on-wall unit, it's gonna be insane. It's gonna make it hard for anybody to buy the flex because but you have to be able to mount it on the wall. And then we'll have full access to hide a hose and all that stuff for our custom install. It's gonna be sick. 
So from Aaron Kaler, is there anything you would change in your airline setup now that you, you have used it for a while? I'm looking to do a full Prevo system in my shop and I'm trying to get it right the first time. Yeah, I mean, so I simplified this air system here much, much more than I've done in the past um, since we're talking about it. I've added a little bit of complexity, but simplified it a bit. So this one has a three stage um, uh, filtration uh, and I didn't do any, um, I didn't do any manifold over here. So one of the things I've done in the past is done manifolds next to my compressor. Uh, so we come in with a flex line right into, put a valve on here so we have the ability to turn off. Uh, and so this is the micro air system from Prevost. It's three straight, three stage filtering. And then, um, and then we have, uh, you know, your filter, your regulator here, not a filter, but just a regulator. Uh, so I can adjust my, my pressure. Um, so this is a silent piston compressor. I think silent piston is the way to go over rotary screw unless you're going to use it all the time. Uh, and then I, the first system we did next door, I put manifolds all over the place. I didn't use any of them. Um, so I only have one manifold, which is over here, just to feed my, my you know, tire changing equipment. So I have a single manifold. Actually, I take it back. We did two manifolds. Um, because I did want one for filling tires accurately with an accurate air. Um, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't get too excited about putting manifolds all over the place because if you do hose reels, you'll never use the manifolds. So I would always err on the side of more hose reels, less manifolds on the wall because you're never going to use a loose hose, you know, unless, you know, I even had it set up you know, where I had like, I had manifolds next to my work top and all that, which I never used because I just used a hose reel. And then you want this hose in your system. So you want this, uh, this is the new OG hose, which is a uh, Continental, um, this is the Continental F5 hose. It's great. And then you want these Prevost couplers. And you want, I, and when you're gonna adopt it, just adopt Euro High Flow. I mean, they're like a two bucks for a cup for a, for a plug, um, but you might as well just adopt Euro High Flow. It's a more, it's a, it's a, there's less parasitic loss in it, not that you have a lot in an air system, but you might as well use the best option since you're starting from scratch. You can just buy a bunch of plugs, just buy like a 25 pack of plugs and you'll be able to use it for any tool you ever need. That's it. All right. Well, a little different Friday. We'll try some of this stuff. If you guys like it, we'll keep doing it. If you don't, I'll keep doing it anyway. So. <laughs> So um, then my next step is to then, now that I have this open, is to start to figure out where I'm going to put it. Uh, and because I need to figure it out for myself, I'll figure it out for all of us that I need to really dial in how we're going to organize this stuff. So that's the next step. But uh, anyway, we'll be doing this with some detailing stuff, which I know you guys will like. We'll do this uh, type of stuff where we talk and dig into more specifically into pressure washing and fittings. Uh, we'll do it with, you know, continue to do it with audio, continue to do it with all the different things we do. So anyway, thanks for being here. And uh, next week we should be back to a normal, normal podcast. We'll see you then.